Welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast. This is Renee Edwards, Deputy Athletic Director, Senior Woman Administrator at Hampton University. Leadership is fluid. It's constant. It's internal. It's growth. One of the best opportunities that I had was to be able to participate in the NCAA Pathways Program. It was game-changing and transformational in how I looked at myself, looked at characteristics of a leader, and taken a deep dive into what it really takes to transform not on your, only yourself, but also lead a department. The sessions is a year-long process where you not only meet at the NCAA national office, but also along with gaining a mentor that's an athletic director and also a president of a university. But one of the most important parts is the cohort that you're with. You're learning from others during the process. So again, the NCAA Pathways program has been transformational um, in my development and able to help me manage up as well as manage down and trying to create the leaders and move the athletic department forward. Enjoy the episode. Greetings, this is Ty Brown, and welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast, where we highlight executive and organizational leadership. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at 1Q Leadership. Our guest today is Darnell Smith. Darnell is the Director of Intercollegiate Athletics and Recreational Sports at Texas A&M University, San Antonio. Greetings, Darnell. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me here today. Yes, sir. I'm glad to have you on. You've been in the industry for roughly 16 years, right? And been there three and a half years there at uh, Texas A&M University, San Antonio. And the reason why I wanted to have you on is because essentially you talk about starting a varsity athletics program at a university. And that's what you are doing there at Texas A&M, San Antonio. Yeah. Tell me about being recruited to that job and coming at it with the mindset of, you know what? I want to plant the seeds, sow the seeds, and grow this athletic and sports here at Texas A&M University, San Antonio. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, San Antonio is my home. Uh, my dad was in the military. We were stationed right there at Lackland Air Force Base. And it was an opportunity for me to come back home. I feel like the good Lord put it, put it on me for me to look at the opportunity and then pursue it. Um, I knew that uh, A&M San Antonio existed. At the time, um, when I initially saw the school, I didn't know that they had sports. Um, and I said, look, at some point, they're going to add sports, and I'm going to be the guy to lead it. Wow. Um, so when they eventually posted the job, I said to myself, this is the time. Matter of fact, I had another opportunity uh, to serve as an athletic director, and without even knowing what happened at Adam San Antonio, uh, I turn that opportunity down because I wanted to pursue the one at AM San Antonio. And when it, they had a consultant, they also had um, uh, a lot of sitting ADs that were vying for the job. I said, well, look, no matter what, um, I'm very passionate about this, uh, this job and I wanted to be in the role. So I just called out all the stops, called my mentors, uh, strategically knowing that they were going to be in the NAIA. I reached out to uh, my colleagues out in the NAIA, uh, reached out to some commissioners. Um, I was trying to just make sure that my name was in the mix as much as possible. And lo and behold, I mean, uh, I, I submitted my application. The job was posted. I submitted the, the very same day, if not the very next day. Um, and the process just took place. It was a very quick search. Um, but in the end, um, I was the one who was able to get the job. Get and I'm job. just very, very thankful. I mean, it's, it, it was a grind, a lot of worrying. But again, I just had my full faith in the good, good Lord above that. And it just worked out for me. Yeah, what's interesting is you said you told yourself early on that at some point they're going to start a sports program. If you're going to be right. a college campus. You might as well have sports. Right. And you said, I'm going to get that job. That's going to be you. Right. Come to fruition. Right. Say it manifested. Be impeccable with your words. I, I appreciate that a lot. Talk to me about that, right? So you come in, you know, you want to start sports. So some of the groundwork has been done or was done for them to say, this is what we want to do. Right. So now you got to come in and say, okay, here's what we want to also want to do. And here's how we want to do it. So tell me about that aspect of how much was work was done in terms of starting the programs and, and how much did you have to bring to the table in terms of your thought after you went in and assessed the situation? Yeah, absolutely. So 
going into the situation, we already have the four sports that, that we currently have identified. And okay. That's men's, women's soccer, or softball, and uh, men's golf. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, when I came into the role, it was, hey, Darnell, we need you to start the programs come that fall, fall of 2020. Okay. Um, so for me, I had to create the vision. I had to uh, hire the people. At one point, I was the athletic department, and the athletic department was me. The only thing that we was assured was that, look, we have the sports. There was support from it, uh, for the sports from the student athletes. I'm sorry, from the students and from the campus and from the community. Um, there was a budget that was given to me, uh, uh, and that budget was a $10 semester credit hour uh, fee. So these are the things that were in place. But for me, I had to put bring it all to fruition. I had to create the vision. Um, I had to hire the coaches. I hired the staff. I hired my athletic trainer. Um, I had to find the facilities. I had to, as I look at it as an artist, I had a blank canvas and I had to paint a masterpiece. And that's what uh, I've done so far. So um, the sports I haven't added, but I put the budget towards each sport. Yeah. Uh, I've uh, uh, got us successfully into the NAIA uh, be, to become active members, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that our policies and procedures are up to date, make sure that we're compliant with Title IX, making sure that uh, the campus, from a marketing standpoint, the community, everyone knows that we exist. We're getting our name out there, fundraising. So everything else you could possibly think of that happens from a AD perspective or just yeah. really in athletics uh, came afterwards. Did you did you did they have to compete in a in a club type situation for a year or two or how, how did that process work in terms of the four sports? Yeah, absolutely. So with the four sports, they were intercollegiate. Uh, and we're members of the Red River Athletic Conference, okay. part of the NAIA. Um, and we were associate members to begin with, which means that we could play, we could compete, um, but we just can't compete for postseason. Um, and there are some other awards that we were not eligible for, um, but we were on the scene and look, it's, it's an opportunity to allow for your institution to get acclimated to the NAIA mm -hmm. and make sure that you're acclimated to the rules and regulations. So when we start off associate member status, we do have club sports on my campus and I oversee the, the recreational uh, side of things as well. Like we have esports and we have uh, competitive cheer, dancing um, and, and so forth. Um, there is, when it comes to recruitment, that's where the crossover may have come over, uh, okay. come over at least from the initial stage, just like with soccer. Um, but yeah, I mean, as, as far as like, um, as far as like with uh, uh, the other offerings, um, that's that's about it. That's how, that's how it worked. So there was no athletics department before. Correct. So this is the interesting dynamic, creating an athletic department, four teams written down on paper, right? So now you're not talking about just coming in and changing a culture. We're right. really talking about creating a culture, right? Right, right. <laughs> when it was just you, okay, now we got one more person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, now there could be a culture because now it's more than just me, right? Now we got to figure out what language we speak, right? right. And now we got to figure out what is success and how we define success. Tell me about that aspect of putting those pieces together step by step from hiring someone to having a team to, you know, starting during the pandemic year to, to now you're like, okay, so are, are we congealing as a, as a, as a culture on campus, making sure we fit the, the values and the mission of the university? Right. So, so with the culture is, is definitely big on with me and with the campus, a lot of things that I've learned from like my time in the NCAA leadership development uh, programs, um, going through the NCAA pathway program, uh, the uh, Achievement Communication Success Program, uh, the MOA programs, all you could think of uh, has really helped shape my leadership style and it really my approach. I believe that uh, leaders are readers and readers are leaders. Okay. And so uh, I've read a lot of books. So John C. Maxwell, Stephen Covey, all these different, you know, uh, thought leaders that are out there. Um, so I, I took a, a collective approach, you know, the culture code, for example, yeah. that, that book. And. You know, whenever I try to approach my team, I look at, are they a good fit? Mm -hmm. Do they mesh well with my values? And my guiding pole or my guiding compass at AM San Antonio is, what's the strategic, the strategic plan with my campus? And the values and uh, the goals that we have to meet there, and do they align with that? Because that's where my priorities are. And so, yeah, once I got that first person, which was uh, my coach, um, then I added the next one, which is another coach. 
Uh, and then I added a third one. Uh, <laughs> so I had my coaches on board, yeah. and I had to explain to them we didn't have any facilities. Uh, we didn't have anything other than a vision. So establishing for me, I had to establish that vision to let them know, like, this is where we're going to go. Yeah. And this is how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and the campus had to believe in it, too. Ever, since day one with my press conference, all the while, I've always figured myself to be a visionary, to be able to see or be a forward thinker. Um, and I, again, I, I credit that to all the development courses and all the things from uh, that I've learned over the years from my mentors, from uh, NCAA, here from the NAIA and some of the things there. Um, but I will say going into the fall 20, I had everyone except for one position, uh, and that was men's soccer. When the pandemic hit and it hit our campus, as far as like institutions shutting down, um, I was not able to hire my full team, uh, and I had to wait to hire my men's soccer coach. So therefore, going into the fall, when we shut down, everything shut down, I was not able to, to start soccer into the fall of 21 because of the delay. But then uh, with spring sports, softball, men's golf, we started uh, in, the, in the spring of 21. So as far as like with the the relationship back to campus, I mean, in building that culture, everyone wants this and everyone's enthusiastic about it. Uh, Jaguar pride, as we like to say. Uh, but it, it, how we got there is just from really working with the president, working with the other campus leaders and really leaning on my experiences from the different development courses and things I've been able to read and just be able yeah. to take up on uh, over the years. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I, I imagine that those coaches wear multiple hats. When you oh, yeah. talk about bringing people on campus, tell me about how how they coaches tend to want to excel at what they do, right? And then sometimes right. coaches want to excel at the coaching part, but the rest of it is like, bro, I'm just trying to just compete, right? <laughs> so, and I know you expect everything out of them, right? So tell me about that aspect of, of having people come on and it's like, look, we're all things athletics, all of us. We're the crew. Right. So let's make this happen. Tell me about that aspect of the, of the culture and getting people on board to those type of expectations. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The culture I try to set is I try to lead by example, yeah. right? So my time in Division II, um, I've learned how to roll up my sleeves and just get the job done. The type of coaches, knowing that within NIA is very similar. Uh, we all got to roll up our sleeves to be able to get the, the job done. So whenever I start to look at coaches or whenever I recruit them and as I was putting the team together, they have to have the same passion for the student athlete experience. Um, and they have to have the same uh, passion for being able to contribute towards that student athlete experience. Um, our coaches had to really help each other out during the time. I mean, uh, we're all we got, as, as we like yeah. to say. Uh, they had to take on different roles on the campus as well. When there was no sports, we had to figure out, well, where do they go? How do they contribute and help back to the campus? But that's all part of what I try to say. Um, I'm not asking them to do anything different than what I would do. Yeah. Um, and getting out to the community, fundraising, um, being able to help with the sponsorships, uh, but ultimately making sure that you can get those students in and show them the experience, but being able to contribute towards that at the end. Yeah, which is, which is of the utmost importance. You mentioned about things that you've learned through various professional development uh, programs you've been in, various books, relationships, mentors, people that have helped you along the way, just things that you learn, which you're like applying everything right now, I imagine, <laughs> over the last three and a half years. <laughs> I think you went through one of the NCAA leadership development programs, right? Talk to me a little bit about that and how, how you're applying some of what you learned there now. And what oh, you're yeah. Doing. Look, I'm, I'm, San Antonio. I'm, I'm very grateful for the NCAA, the whole leadership development team and those that were a part of it when I, w I was going through it in my early administrative days and then those that are part of it even now. So I wanted to get involved as much as I could. I wanted to become a, a, an athletic director. And I, uh, I started off like with MOA, for example, and did the Division II Governance Academy. Yeah. I understood how these things work, the, the governing structure, the policies and the committees and the importance of representing on those committees. Leadership, the NCAA, I've done the Leadership Institute where I met, I consider them like brothers and sisters even to this day. And we went through and we understood how to work with each other, how to uh, really appreciate each other's backgrounds and but really push, push forward. Um, but also being able to give back to be able to help the next generation. So we learn a great deal about being leader, but understanding our why 
and then pursuing our passion through our why. I've done the uh, effective, effective facilitation workshop um, with the NCAA, learned how to get out there and now gear it towards uh, the student athlete experience, um, how to provide or at least facilitate these conversations that may be a little bit more difficult or, or challenging. I was a participant in that as well. Um, I've also served on, what was it? No, yeah, the Achieving Communication Success Workshop, <laughs> where now you get in front of the media, you're, you're being taped, and everything is being scrutinized. So I, I could go on and on and on, but, I mean, these programs really helped define uh, my leadership, and, and I took very aspects from it. And as far as, like, with the mentors, I met a lot of my mentors mm -hmm. through these uh, leadership developments. Oh, really? uh, I mean, I, I can... I'll name just a couple. I can't name all, yeah, but yeah, no for example, Tim Duncan mm -hmm. um, has been fantastic. And Marcus Manning was another one of my, my mentors. China Jew, mm -hmm. uh, another one of my, my mentors. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on, but these individuals sought enough to be able to help me during the process to be able to, to uh, ascend to the, the chair and just really instill a lot of their faith and, and hope and trust in me. I'll ask you a couple questions here, and then we'll wrap specifically about that one. Professional development to coaches sometimes, for the, well, and since I've worked with coaches and I worked with administrators, a lot of times the administrators think professional development with coaches is just, is just sending them to their respective conventions, right? Soccer coaches convention, American football coaches convention, whatever. I, I tend to think it's a little more than that, right? You do that, but there's there's probably some some touch points and engagement from the leader in terms of developing the people who work on staff. Tell me about that for your staff, especially at a school where they're wearing multiple hats within the athletics department, in addition to being the teachers to the student athletes. Yeah, absolutely. So my coaches, the majority of them have a background in, in teaching. Um, so they understand how to deliver messages and mm -hmm. or uh, can convey those things to, to their programs. Okay. I, I take an approach about leadership. Um, we've done our, what we like to call the um, strength-based finders, yeah. where you have to determine what your top five or top 10 yeah. strengths are. Yeah. Uh, every time I've done it, I've been a learner. Uh, it's just, and then everything else has just kind of been in the air, strategic or, or, or whatnot. But with the coaches, we, I expect the same thing. So during our retreats or every year, uh, we like to look at uh, where we are from a leadership standpoint. We've done the strength-based finders with the, with the programs, as well as with recreational sports. Um, that way we understand where do we fall in these categories so we can be more strategic with how we work with each other. Another thing I'm going to try to do in the future is bring in the disc analysis okay. uh, to, to kind of see if they're Ds, Is, S, or Cs. I, I, I've been trained enough in that to be able to apply my own perspective, but... You know, I, I, I would probably be short-sighted until we actually got the results. Get a formal assessment, it, it, yeah. It, absolutely. And and off, also, I'm thinking about doing the uh, the Myers-Briggs. Okay. So the Myers-Briggs or the MBTI, be able to determine are they introvert, extrovert, are they intuitive, are they sensing, are they judging, are they feeling, are they per perceiving? It's, it's or they, funny. Uh, it's, it, it sounds like you want to do everything so you have all the information yeah, about your st staff so that you can lead them in the right direction. Yeah, how to see, it's like, yeah. you know, in over a period of time, and we'll, you know, we are going to do it all, yeah. but that's just what it's about. I don't want to be stagnant. I want to make learning and, and uh, education fun mm -hmm. and exciting because what we're doing is pretty challenging. Yeah. We're all collectively building this athletics department from scratch. We're moving forward. We're transforming lives. Uh, we're, 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 we're putting opportunities in the hands of parents and students to be able to do something that has never been done before, and that's to be able to take Adam San Antonio to, to newer heights. So to do that, you know, we have to have a good level head. We have to have fun. Or when, when you asked about the culture, I want to make sure we have fun too. Yeah. So I may come out with all the dad jokes or bad puns. All right. I, you know, they say, you know, they laugh, but they may say it's kind of bad or not. But, but we're going to have a culture where we're going to have a lot of fun, but we're also going to be serious about growth. And with the Myers-Briggs, all these things that I've done personally has helped me. And if it's helped me, I believe it can help others like my coaches. Okay. Excellent, man. I, I, I think what you've done there is excellent and will continue to be excellent. Cause you talk about three and a half years where we haven't even had a whole, you know, <laughs> eligibility class go through and graduate. Right. So, All right. 
it so we're that cohort. Right. It can only get better, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I really appreciate you joining us here on the One Question Leadership Podcast. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, and, you know, it's incredible. You're doing incredible things for thank yourself. You. And I just appreciate you and for having this time with me. Yes, sir. That was Darnell Smith. Darnell is the Director of Intercollegiate Athletics and Recreational Sports at Texas A&M University, San Antonio. And of course, I am Ty Brown with one question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.